This is the famous Dwarkadhish temple in the city of Dwarka in Gujarat's Devbhumi Dwarka district. The ancient city of Dwarka is mentioned in the Mahabharata as a kingdom of Shri Krishna. Located in Gujarat along India's western coastline, it is one of the most revered pilgrimage centers of Hinduism. In the 1950s, Professor B. B. Lal was carrying out excavations at various Mahabharata sites like Hastinapura, Ahitchatra, Kurukshetra, etc. Similarly, in the 1960s, excavators from Deccan College, led by Dr. H. D. Sankalia, carried out excavations at Dwarka. Dr. Sankalia theorized that the ancient city of Dwarka could not be older than around 2000 years. But one man was not satisfied. That was Professor Shikaripura Ranganatha Rao. What actually prompted me to undertake onshore and offshore excavation at Dwarka is the controversy that was raging about the date and historicity of Mahabharata. The Deccan College, Pune, excavated in 1963 Dwarka and came to the conclusion that it was the Dwarka of Mahabharata period. But Dr. Sankalia expressed the opinion that the first settlement at Dwarka could not have been earlier than the first century AD or BC. This, of course, was contrary to all established facts of history because Mahabharata war and the founding of Dwarka cannot be post-Mauryan events. Upon demolishing a modern building near the Dwarkadhish temple and excavating underneath it, S.R. Rao found a Vishnu temple dated to the 9th century CE. S.R. Rao kept digging further in Dwarka. The city of Dwarka is located at the point where the Gomti river joins the Arabian Sea. According to legend, one of Krishna's Yadava ancestors had built the fortified city of Kushasthali at this site. Kushasthali later became Dwarka or Dwaravati, the gated city, when Krishna settled with the Yadavas after leaving Mathura. S.R. Rao discovered that Dwarka's foundations go six layers deep, suggesting that the city was thousands of years old. His team hit upon a settlement that dated to 1500 BC. At the oldest level, there is evidence that the sea had submerged the settlement. Interestingly, Dwarka is said to have been submerged by the sea at the end of Krishna's life here on earth. S.R. Rao and his team also discovered that when Dwarka was founded, the sea levels were 10 meters lower than they are today. Rao also found a type of pottery called lustrous redware, which was also found at the site of Prabhasa or Somnath, another site mentioned in the Mahabharata. This pottery dated back to 1500 BC. S.R. Rao's discoveries concluded that Dwarka was a flourishing city around 1500 BC, which the sea had later conquered. But the intrepid archaeologist did not stop there. The island of Beit Dwarka lies 30 kilometers from the present Dwarka. Considered as holy as Dwarka itself, it was once connected with the mainland. Rao and his team conducted archaeological research at the island and discovered an ancient fortification spanning more than half a kilometer. Other remnants of an ancient city were also found. Beit Dwarka is also known as Shankodhara, with Shankha referring to conch shells, and true to its name, several shell artifacts were found at the site. Shell fishing and shell working were an important industry at Beit Dwarka. Interestingly, several shell workshops have been found at the urban centers of the Sindhu Saraswati civilization. Underwater excavations at Beit Dwarka led to the discovery of lustrous redware pottery, seals, inscribed jars, and stone plates. Here is a perforated jar associated with the late Harappan phase of the Sindhu Saraswati civilization that was discovered. A late Indus type seal was also discovered. Offshore excavations led to the discovery of massive stone structures. Researchers found four walls, entrance gateways, and circular bastions. They also unearthed stone anchors dating back to 1400 to 1200 BC from the seabed, indicating the presence of trade and shipping. This again tells us of the vibrant trade network between the Indian subcontinent, the Mediterranean region, and Mesopotamia. A stone pillar and pedestal, copper artifacts like bells and nails, and seals were discovered. S.R. Rao had finally unearthed Dwarka. The present findings corroborate the description of the city of Dwarka as given in the Mahabharata that it was a Varidurga, that is, a fortress in water. The artist's impression based on the findings gives a clear picture 
as to how Dwarka looked like. Now that the existence of the ancient city of Dwarka in 1500 BC and its submergence as stated in the Mahabharata have been proved, these findings have now opened up new vistas in the frontiers of marine archaeology and underwater cultural heritage. S.R. Rao worked for 32 years for the Archaeological Survey of India. He was Emeritus Scientist and Head of the Marine Archaeology Department at the National Institute of Oceanography. Further excavations at Dwarka were carried out by a team of archaeologists led by Dr. Alok Tripathi in 2007. Apart from stone structures and remnants of a settlement, scientists have till now found evidence of maritime trade, including around 125 stone anchors. The stone structure, which shows a civilized settlement, is spread across 450 meters off the coast and is over 7 to 8 meters below water. Findings are from the early history to middle period, that is 2000 years old, and from the late Harappan period, that is 4000 years old. This is how the discoveries made by S.R. Rao led to a whole new set of discoveries, changing how ancient Indian history is viewed today. In 2022, marine scientists of the National Institute of Oceanography began digitizing the evidence found at the site. S.R. Rao's underwater excavations, which were the first of its kind in India, brought to light a submerged city and a hidden aspect of Indian history.